Hi, Dan Stein here. Is the media the media any longer? And has true journalism died? I'm here with Joe Gomez, Fierce Press Secretary, who also has a long lineage in the news business. We're going to talk a little bit about the news coverage we've been seeing in the last several weeks and how it tells us modern journalism is dying. Joe, thanks for being here. What do you got for us? Well, thanks for having me, Dan. You know, it's been fascinating to watch this past week. Um, if you watch a lot of the major news outlets like CNN or uh, NBC or uh, even CBS at times, you would think that this was a terrible week for the Trump administration when, in fact, it's turned out to be, uh, to be a great week. I mean, it, he won on the travel ban with the Supreme Court's decision. That was fantastic news for the Trump administration. Um, and then you also have the uh, uh, Justice, uh, uh, Justice Kennedy, rather, who is uh, retiring. That gives uh, Trump another opening there. Uh, with the Supreme Court. And, right. and then, of course, those immigration bills uh, died that were really big pro-amnesty bills. But boy, if you watch the mainstream media, you'd never know that it was actually a pretty good week for this administration. Well, I mean, are, are most Americans still getting their news from the so-called mainstream media? I mean, a lot of these legacy press organizations, Philadelphia Inquirer, LA Times, they're really not viable independent news organizations anymore. They've got partnerships with nonprofit organizations like ProPublica. These are entities that are funded by George Soros, MacArthur Foundation, Ford Foundation. They're basically anti-immigration control, no border control entities. And so what we used to consider newspapers are not really independent news gathering organizations that make their money in the news business, they're subsidized by the nonprofit sector and private foundations. And that's reflected in the biased coverage we see. This whole child separation policy was really a reflection of a propaganda effort, right? Designed to distort the, the fact that there's a direct lineage between both Democrats and Republican administrations that have changed the law in the treatment of juveniles. And now it's being distorted in all kinds of ways to suggest that somehow Trump and the administration, because they're cracking down on those who cross the border illegally and they have to separate the children because of court settlements this administration had nothing to do with, that somehow it's their fault. And why would the media be so complicit in politicizing something that's been going on for a long time now? Well, Dan, as an insider, as somebody who's worked in uh, news uh, for about 10 years and for some major networks, I can tell you that the image of a child crying uh, or, you know, families being separated or people kept in these so-called cages, which were temporary processing centers. Look, Trump is a great builder, but I don't think he built those uh, centers overnight. They've been around for a long time, folks. But when you see those images... Yeah, but when, 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 when an American father is sent to prison for a drug violation, does the media sit there and take pictures of the crying children who are being separated because the, the parent is going to jail? That's, that's a good point, Dan. That never happens. I mean, you never see the media lined up outside of some uh, courthouse because the father is going to jail for uh, felony drug possession and the children are crying. They have no place to go. CPS has taken away the kids. Where are the cameras then? It never happens. It's only on this issue when you deal with illegal immigration and uh, children being separated, so-called separated at the border, even though President Trump signed an executive order saying that he wanted the families to be reunified. It's like he can't win for losing. So if, you, if people want to get accurate information on the issue, okay, avoid the propaganda. In addition to going to FAIR's website and our affiliated Law Institute Early's website, what news outlets would you recommend? Well, there's, uh, there's plenty of good ones out there. I mean, you can go to uh, Fox News, which has proven to be uh, very reliable when it comes to giving you, uh, I think, uh, more of the truth, both sides of the issue. Uh, FAIR, obviously, is we've done a very good job of that. We've released documentaries and so forth. You can go to immigrationreform.com for our blogs. But I tell this whenever I... About I Breitbart? Breitbart's pretty good. Breitbart's not bad, too. Uh, Washington Examiner. Daily Caller. Free Beacon. Daily yeah. Caller. Yep. Yeah. Washington Times. Washington, Washington Times. Times is great. But a, lot, a lot of places where you can get true and accurate information. Instead of some of the stuff we're seeing uh, from these other blogs, these other so-called news sites, and I'll, and I'll show you uh, one of the headlines, folks. This is from Slate. Uh, this is from Slate. Uh, Slate's website, and it, it says the America we thought we knew is gone. The Supreme Court is now Trump's, and so we grieve for America. Well, that's not a biased headline, is it? <laughs> And then you go to, well, you go to the Huffington Post. Now, some people, some people don't even think the Huffington Post is a, is a real news site anymore. 
Yeah, that never <laughs> was. Look, they put Trump on the ed entertainment pages in 2016. They didn't take him seriously as a candidate. And Huffington Post, I can tell you, hadn't gotten any better since then. <laughs> no, if you look, if you go to their do main you, page, do you read today, the Huffington Post? I, I only read it to laugh of the, at the headlines. But if you if, if you, you read the Huffington Post, <laughs> if you read, the, you really need you need some digitalis. <laughs> you need some help. But if you go to their main website, it says on the Huffington Post, their last chance is to uh, last hope flood the court. They want the Democrats to try to. Uh, flood the court with Democrat, Democratic justices by electing a Democratic president to prevent decades, this is a quote, decades of rule by the alt-rights in America. The alt-rights. Well, I okay. thought the Huffington Post yesterday said that the Trump administration was promoting international fascism, okay? Obviously, people who have never cracked a history book don't know anything about it, but why would the media want to amplify this crazy rhetoric of the radical left wing at a time, you think it's money? It's money, absolutely. It's money and ratings. Uh, what people don't understand is that, you know, the, the more panic and fear or anger uh, that is ginned up in America, the more people are tuned in to watch uh, MSNBC and watch some of these anchors crying and so forth. The more that goes on, they're making they're making tons of money on advertisements. So it actually benefits but, but, them. But, 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 but promoting this sort of radical left wing agenda has its downside, right? Well, sir. Kirsten, Kurt, Senator Kirsten Gillibrand, I'm sure you've all heard this, Senator from New York, kind of an opportunistic windsock, started out as a as a one term member of Congress from upstate New York. She was a strong border controller for that time, and then flipped the minute she got appointed to take Hillary Clinton's place in the Senate. She's now called for the abolition of Immigration Customs Enforcement, ICE. This is the agency that handles customs, protects our country uh, from the importation of child pornography, what have you, all kinds of things like that. They also enforce immigration law in the interior. ICE stands right at the threshold of ensuring American workers get first crack at American jobs by enforcing employer sanctions, worksite enforcement. They also deport criminal aliens, dangerous criminal aliens, and other people here illegally, which, by the way, is still a grounds for removal under immigration law. Why would a U.S. senator call for the abolition of ICE? Well, she's trying to play the I marketing. Mean, is she telling us what the true agenda is now? Is this the agenda? It, it may be. I mean, we're seeing this, you know, abolish ICE uh, hashtag pop up on Twitter. I mean, you have these protesters. Descending. She's a senator, a U.S. senator. Is she have a, does she have... An idea how to replace it, or do we just roll it up? I think I think the I, I, it sounds like they're just throwing whatever whatever they can and see if it, seeing if it sticks to the wall, seeing if they can get enough panic, enough people energized to go out and protest or scream and yell. I mean, you had these and protesters so, and yet, at the ICE and yet building. The agency. abolition of ICE was viewed until the other day as a completely fringe lunatic idea, right? Absolutely, nobody and, went. And no, all of a sudden, this that. candidate, Alexandria, right from a Bronx district in a race that nobody paid attention to because the incumbent Crowley was going to be probably speaker someday. He was a long-term guy, been there forever. Nobody ever thought he was going to lose. As a result, in a district where you have very high non-immigrant population, 700,000 plus people, nobody bothered to go to vote in the primary, right? We're talking, she won, she got 15, she didn't win by, she got 15,000 votes. She won by about three or 4,000 votes, okay, out of so, so basically she got 15,000 votes out of a district that has over 700,000 people in it. So less than 3% of the people in her district voted for her. And she was a democratic socialist. <laughs> democratic socialist. Nobody paid attention to her. Nobody paid any attention. No, the voters didn't turn out because they figured she was uh, not going to win. They figured Crowley was just going to get reelected. All of a sudden it takes on national significance. And now a New York senator who's known for shifting positions, Kirsten Gillibrand, has now said... She wants to abolish ICE. And of course, who follows in her jet stream? Mayor Bill de Blasio. All right. All that's fine if they want to go off the lunatic fringe. But why wouldn't the media be skeptical and uh, hold him up? Can you imagine somebody from the Trump administration? Oh, my goodness. He's, he says, oh, we're going to drop out of the WTO. <clears throat> Five seconds. Next thing you know, Joe Scarborough, Republican, former Republican Joe Scarborough, you know, he's having a fit about this, but do they... Do they Rachel do they... Maddow would be crying on television every night. If, I mean, it, look, I mean, it would be remarkable if something like that were to happen in the Trump administration. 
if they would be targeted, I mean, they'd be... It, the, What's with the crying on TV? I, I don't know. Did Edward R. Murrow ever cry on TV <laughs> during I, Harvest I, of Shame? I think that he did, but... Uh, did, I think no, he didn't moment. cry. Did, wasn't there a moment when he did... Uh, there, I swear there was... No, a, he didn't If cry. there was a moment of historical significance or something, but, but even... But Murrow always kept us cool, right? He was a newsman. The, he was balanced. He made sure that you, the American people, the viewers, the public, got both sides of the story. His job was not to tell you what to think. His job was to give you the facts, and then you make your decision. But that is not what's happening anymore. Well, he didn't sound like a snotty college kid like Rachel does. <laughs> well, I mean, it, it's, it's, it's unfortunate to see, you know, how the, the spiraling downward of, of, of media and, and journalism, and it's all about, it's a gotcha game. Yeah, but do they understand they're they're forever destroying their credibility as like like objective news organizations? I mean, maybe it's good we go back to the old days of having partisan outlets and lots of them, which is fine. But let's clear away the eyewash and stop pretending that it's journalism in the sense that all of us who grew up in the 60s and 70s used to see journalism. Columbia Journalism Review, School of Journalism, forget all that, okay? Just call it what it is. Everybody's got their propaganda outlets. Let's assume it's propaganda. Story du jour. Don't take it seriously. Read a lot of sources, diverse sources, if you want to get the truth. And naturally, you want to come to FAIR's website, F-A-I-R-U-S dot O-R-G, on a regular basis and follow this Twitter feed. Joe, good time. All right. Thank thanks, you. Dad. Thanks for joining us. Joe Gomez and Dan Stein.